Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we've got a great rotational dynamics problem. Uh, here it is. I have a rod that has a mass 2.1 kg, a length of 0.6 meters, and I have it hanging here at an angle of 35 degrees with respect to the ground. It's being suspended there by a string connected near the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the scissor and snip that string, and I have two problems associated with this. Uh, number one, how do you find that initial angular acceleration of the problem when it starts to rotate? Uh, what is alpha for this problem? Uh, in problem two, I said, well, once it starts to rotate, it's eventually going to come and hit the ground. The instant before it hits the ground, how fast is it rotating? In other words, what is the final angular velocity of the problem? All right, kind of a nice problem. Uh, there are three ways to support Physics Ninja here. Uh, number one, give it a like if you like the video. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. And if you have the means, consider giving a super thanks. All right, folks, let's get started. All right, here's our first problem. Uh, we have a uniform rod that has a mass of 2.1 kg and a length of 0 0.6. It's attached to the floor down here um, with a frictionless pivot. It's also suspended by the string. Now the initial angle that this rod makes with respect to the ground is listed as 35 degrees. We then cut this string. So the first question we have is what is the angular acceleration of the rod? We're looking for the value alpha. Well, how do you find alpha? Uh, when I think of alpha, I think about Newton's second law for rotation, that the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times alpha. So what we have to do is calculate two things. We have to calculate the torque. And then we also need the moment of inertia. And at the end, you just can solve for what the angular acceleration is. So let's think about the torque. So the torque, what you have to do is just consider all the forces acting on the object and consider which forces are producing a torque on the system. So we have a mass here and we have a uniformly distributed rod. Therefore, the weight, we should simply place it at the center of the rod. That's the center of mass. So you have mg acting down. Now, in addition to that, let me go ahead and write this angle here. This angle is our angle phi, which is 35 degrees. Uh, now, there's probably another force, right? There's going to be another force acting on this pivot here. And I'm not really interested in this one because whatever force is acting right here at the pivot will not produce a torque because the distance to the pivot is zero. So now let's think about how you calculate the torque, this left-hand side. Uh, if I remember, my torque definition is RF sine of the angle theta if I'm looking at the magnitude of the torque. And that has to be equal to I alpha. So what are all these values over here? Okay, so R is the distance to the pivot. In this case here, it is this distance, which happens to be L over 2. My force is the weight, so I know that. That's simply mg. But now we have to worry about what is this angle theta here? Okay, so for this one, it's a little bit trickier. Um, the angle theta is actually the angle between um, the R vector and the F vector. So what I would suggest to my students is you redraw both of them. So R is a vector that goes from the pivot to the point where the force is being applied. And the weight is right down here. It's simply straight down. That's mg. That's our force. Okay. Now, the angle theta, the way it's defined in that torque equation, is this one. All right, well, I don't know that one right away, but I can do some trigonometry. I do know what uh, this other angle is going to be on the other side because I have a right angle triangle. So I should know, just by looking at this diagram, that this angle right here is 55 degrees. That means that the angle theta um, is, should be equal to 125 degrees. The nice thing about the sine function that appears here for the torque is that you will find that the sine of 125 equals to the sine of 55. That's the complementary properties of uh, the sine function. So it actually doesn't matter which one you take. However, you cannot take this angle phi in this definition of torque. That wouldn't be correct. All right, so we have all the terms here to calculate the torque. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute them in. So R was L over 2. F is the force, and now I'm simply going to write sine of 55 degrees. So the only thing I have left is what is the moment of inertia of this rod, and it's a rod being pivoted through the end point down here. So for that, you have to look at the equations, 
And there's one equation that writes the moment of inertia through the end of a rod as being this, one third, the mass of the rod is m, multiplied by the length squared. That's the moment of inertia of the rod. So what you have to do now is you go and you substitute that moment of inertia up here in this equation, and then the only unknown is alpha. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have one third ml squared multiplied by alpha. So here's my moment of inertia times alpha. That has to be equal to the torque. So L over 2 mg sine of 55 degrees. All right, now you can use your calculator. Or actually, let's uh, eliminate some of the variables because they appear on both sides. So I have one length on the right-hand side. I have length square over here. I also have the mass that can cancel out both sides. And now I'm going to write one final expression for alpha. Just isolate it. I bring the 3 on the other side. I'm left with 3 halves. I still have g, and I still have sine of 55 degrees. And I'm going to divide that by the length l. So now we substitute 3 halves, little g, I'll take 9.8, sine of 55, and my length of the rod, the total length here is 0 0.6 meters. All right, you go ahead and you put that in the calculator, you should get 20.1, and that's always measured in radians per second if I have all the units right. So I go ahead and look at the choices, and that looks like choice A for me. All right, not too bad. All right, uh, here's question B it says, what is the angular velocity of the rod just before it becomes horizontal and hits the ground? Okay, and we've got five choices here. So now we have to think about how to solve this problem. So let's go to the next page. Just give myself a little bit more space. All right, so uh, what students often do for this problem is they write down kinematic equations. All right, they might write this one down. They might say, well, I have some angular displacement. Um, angular displacement equation looks like this, and maybe I can solve for the time and then substitute and solve for omega final, right? Uh, however, this approach is actually wrong because alpha is not constant, okay, for this problem. Alpha changes as the rod angle changes. So what we have to use instead to find what the final omega is uh, we have to use conservation of energy, right? There is no friction in this problem, so conservation of energy works quite well. So if you think about conservation of energy, we think about the rod in the initial configuration, and then we think about the rod in the final configuration. And you have to simply look at the total energy in the initial versus the final and set them equal to each other. So what do we have initially? Well, we have a center of mass that is a certain height above the ground. Uh, we're also given this angle phi here, this interior angle, so I'll do that. And then in my final configuration, I have the center of mass that is flat. <laughs> so uh, what do we have? Well, initially, all we have is, think about the total energy. Uh, the total energy at any point you can write as gravitational plus kinetic. Okay, And then at the end, you have to have gravity final plus kinetic. K final, and this here would be the initial gravity. So some of these terms are zero. For example, this initial kinetic energy is zero. And if I set the ground to be equal to the zero height, that means at the end I don't have any gravitational potential energy. So all we're left here then is, what is this initial gravitational energy? Well, it's MGH. And then that has to be equal to my final kinetic energy. The only thing happened at the end is that this whole rod here is rotating with some omega. Therefore, the kinetic energy is just rotation. It's one half I, and it's the moment of inertia through the end. The rod is rotating through that pivot point, multiplied by omega final squared. All right, at the end, this is what I'm looking for. I simply have to substitute all the values. Let's think about this height H first. Well, the height H you can write here as... Uh, you can do some trigonometry. This is L over 2. So what you have here is L over 2 sine of that angle phi. All right. And then we can substitute the I and the N here uh, on the right-hand side. So let's do a little bit more algebra. So we have uh, M, G, L over 2 sine of phi. What else? Uh, One-third. Uh, sorry, one-half. <laughs> I through the N is one-third ml squared multiplied by omega final squared. Well, now I have terms that are constant on both sides, so I have the mass I can get rid of. I have this factor of two that I can get rid of this one. 
Uh, what else? I have a length L on both sides. Here I cross out uh, one of them. And at the end, now we can write down one final expression for omega, then substitute our values. So be a little bit careful with this step here. You should have 3g sine of phi and divided by, I still have a length in there, and now I have to take the square root of everything. So now we substitute the numbers, so we get 3, 9.8, sine of 35 degrees, and divided by the length, which is 0 0.6, I put the numbers in the calculator and I should get 5.3 radians per second. Okay, so there's my answer and that looks like choice A. All right, not too bad a problem, okay? Uh, just be careful of the angular acceleration and using the kinematic equations. You cannot do it for this case because it is not constant. All right, folks, we'll see you next time.